Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, it is time. It is time, Judy. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hi, I'm Becky from Power Tools with Thread. Today I am quilting with my peeps. Yay. <laughs> good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing great. Yeah. Okay. I'll have an update on Diane uh, down in Australia in Queensland in just a little bit. She sent me an email. She made it through the cyclone. So that's good. Yeah. But no power, but she's fine. So uh, you are in our situation room. I've got it on a sign right over here. So it must be true, right? And uh, this is a virtual stitching retreat where we just start our day together or end our day as the case may be, depending where you are in the world. I see my Texas girls are all in the house. That's good. Oh, wow. Okay. So uh, if you are new here, please let us know in the chat. Uh, some people are a little shy. Please don't be. I, I say all the time, these people could walk right by each other in a quilt shop and not know that that's the person they've been chatting with in the mornings. So um, this is going to be uh, a nice spot for everybody to sit and have a cup of your favorite. And we've got a virtual kitchen. So it is on the other side of the room. And uh, there's pastries over there already, some eggs and bacon, I think, maybe some breakfast tacos. It's Friday. Scotty Dog is supposed to bring monkey bread on Friday. I don't know. But uh, I haven't poked over there to see. Anyway, all fat and calorie free, and it's just for fun, you guys, so there's no other website to go to. I have people email me and say, I can't find how to get to the virtual kitchen. Like there's a little coves going on over there and everybody's sitting and they're visiting, which is probably true. That kind of happens here in the chat, right? It's just for fun. So, Kathy, you made it for the right time to start the live. Yay, good for you. <clears throat> you love my little bird shirt. Isn't this cute? Yeah, this popped up in a Facebook feed, you guys. So um, anyway, 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 you know, today is Friday and it's my last day here until February 5th because I leave tomorrow on a uh, cruise. Well, I fly to or Orlando tomorrow. We leave out of Port Canaveral. So Dickinson, Texas will quilt. I need to know where that is, if you would be so kind. As far as I'm concerned, you're my neighbor, regardless, if you've got TX after your town. <laughs> oh, well, listen, y'all, I know, I know. It's okay. It's okay. I, I was just looking this morning on my channel, and it said I have 771 videos on YouTube. 771 videos. I'm sure you'll find something to, to, to look at. Oh, over by NASA. Is that what I saw real quick that went by Susan? Oh, okay. She says it's by NASA. So we are going on so and sale 13. I will be teaching uh, one or two days on that cruise. I can't remember. And it's a, a scan and cut master class. So that's going to be so much fun. Well, thank you, Teresa. She says she loves my videos. I love you too. You're a sweetheart. So I made, um, if you've never been on a sewing cruise, it's so cool because people put stuff on their doors. All of the walls and the doors on cruise ships are metal. So you can bring magnets. Like I've got some that have little clips and you can bring magnets and you can hang stuff on your doors. And so I made this. Most people make something that uh, is from their home state, kind of show where they're from or that they love to sew or something like that. So I got real creative and I have been meaning for months to put, you know, fancy embroidery on here because um, uh, I think Judy from Hawaii did a beautiful, beautiful um, aloha all the way down her door and it had the 3D butterflies and it was from Purely Gates. So it had the Mylar in it. It was one of those things that made you stop and go, oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. And she sewed it all together. So anyway, not that creative. I have been looking at 
all the purely gates and I have like two or three of them, the Texas stuff, the boots, all the Texas stuff. I don't know. I ended up with this. This is a panel from Moda. Again, not that creative. I just did some straight line quilting on it. I was just figuring out my channel locks on my King Quilter 2 from Sewing Machines Plus. So this is it. This is going to hang on my door. So now anybody who's on the cruise with me, you'll know where my cabin is. <laughs> Don't come knocking two in the morning. <laughs> but um, I had some old uh, blue bonnet fabric. I just stuck it on the back for a backing. I thought it was fine. But uh, this is from the Hey Y'all uh, quilt. And I've got the kit. So... I wanted just this panel and I found it down at Quilter's Patch in Victoria, Texas. So I went ahead and grabbed it. Um, it's a small town between Houston and Galveston. Okay. Off I-45. Oh, I've been. Yeah, 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 yeah. When we went to Galveston, I think I saw the sign for that. Yep. Is it going to be taped? You'll need to learn more about your scan and cut. Dor are you talking about on the ship? Uh, no, that won't be taped. No. So anyway, um, I've got some magnet clips. I did put my little hanging triangles behind. There's two of them here. Okay. So this can hang in my room when I'm not on a ship. And now if I'd have been smart, you're thinking of adding app, uh, applique motif to the setting blocks. Do you need to add SF-101 on the back for stability. Teresa, okay. So adding SF-101 to the back of a quilt block is going to change the hand of the block just a little bit, all right? So you kind of want to think about how stiff you want that block to be, but I only put SF-101 on the back of quilt blocks with applique if I'm going to be using a satin stitch, okay? So if you're going to be using a satin stitch or a real tight zigzag like we showed yesterday where uh, the Hoppy Easter. So I have SF-101 on the back of this only because of the font. Only because of the font. Because that's a tight zigzag. Is That's what the Luminaire did. If it didn't have the font on it, and it's just the bunny with the blanket stitching? No, I would not do that. So I don't have any of the chicken blocks in chicken salad. They are not backed with SF-101. So just kind of think about if you're going to be stitching something that's got a really tight zigzag, that would be a fill, a satin stitch border, or font, or lettering. Unless you're going to letter by hand, of course, which I don't do. So... I could add some hotfix adhesive rhinestones. Oh, Charlene, that's a great idea. Thank you. See, you guys are so smart and creative, and I just feed off of y'all. I think it's wonderful. That's a good idea. So I tell you what, uh, rhinestones was something that was part of the Scan and Cut Create box from Amy Bachman, Amy Sews, and she sent some. Bedazzle. Yeah, there we go, Kim. Blue Bonnet, Texas flower. Yes, Kathy, this is our state flower. It's my favorite flower. It's our state flower. Y'all, when you drive by, so we're coming up on Blue Bonnet season too. Because uh, about March, all this rain we just had in January, and any rain we get up until March, they will just start, you know. They will just start. My husband, we've thrown, um, he likes to throw Blue Bonnet seeds out in our front because we live in a rural area and that way my front yard's blue bonnets in March and he doesn't have to mow the grass, <laughs> but they bloom for about a month. So, okay. But anyway, I got that done, but I like the idea of bedazzling it. I think that's a great idea. I, I definitely need to do that. Now I'm excited to, to do that this morning. So you still have yours from hanging. Oh, okay. So, title of this video. Oh, let me tell y'all now that everybody's here. Um, 
I got an email this morning from Diane down in Queensland, Australia. She's a regular on here. And uh, she and I, this time last year, were on a cruise ship together on the deck, hanging out. But um, she's out of power. And uh, I don't know how long her power is going to be out. She's in an apartment. So she's up off the ground and didn't withstand that too much. She doesn't have too much damage. But without the power, her elevator's out. And she got a new knee last week. So she can't go up and down the stairs. So she says she's fine. She's got plenty of food and water. And she's uh, doing some knitting. So that's going to keep her busy. Okay. So yeah, Betty Boop, I know you love bling. I need to, I need to, you want to see it when it's bedazzled. All right, Lynn, there's the pressure now. I got to do that. I've got the bling kit. I'll have to ask Amy to help me because I'm not, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> anyway, and I got to tell y'all, we are such a wonderful community. Okay. Not only did I get an email from Diane, I got an email from another lady, Kim, who lives in a town not too far from her to let me know the storm damage that they had and to, to let me know that, you know, everything was fine with her, but that she was out of power. So it's just really nice. Oh, you've watched Reen from Embroidery Garden, Kim, do the bling? Okay. It's just really nice that y'all look out for one another. I think that's fantastic. That it's just such a nice, nice thing. So, hey, we're going to do a giveaway today. Bling it, baby. All right, Donna, I'm on it. Bling it. We're going to do a giveaway today. Do some hashtag power tools for me. Uh, I'm going to give away a, because I'm not going to do anything on Sunday. Remember, I'm only doing that once a month now. But um, how about a... Be creative charm pack from Deb Strain for Moda. How about that? That cool? Hashtag power tools. Let me check and make sure that the giveaway tool is collecting it from you guys. Yes, it is. So um, we'll, I'll give this away today. It's just, this is so cute, y'all. It's got the darks. Beautiful, pretty fabrics. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So it's just a charm pack. You guys can uh, put some coordinating fabric with it and make yourself a cute little bee table runner. I saw some honeycombs in there. Did I not? Yeah. See the honeycombs? Make yourself a table runner in there. Isn't that cute? Lots of bees. Don't get stung. I think we've got some words. Look at this. Yeah, we've got some words. That's really cute. So that'll be a nice little thing. Uh, get ready for summer coming up. Oh, this is a pretty print. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Very nice. Okay, so it's hashtag power tools. Debbie, you need, it needs to be all one word. Go ahead and put it in again, sweetie. Let me do it on screen so y'all can see uh, what is the right one. Oh, uh, let me see here. Madonna got it. Hashtag power tools. Okay. That's how you do that. All one word, no caps, not power tools with thread. Oh, no favor. You, you're, you're on those little emojis, girlfriend. I'll tell you what. <laughs> okay. I knew that that, hey, y'all was missing something. I'm on that now. I'm going to figure that out. I'm going to watch a little video on it today, and figure out how to do that because I have everything for it. You know, I've got the class from Amy Sews. So Amy Bachman from Amy So, she's one sponsoring the cruise. Uh, she does a class. She's got a scan and cut create box. I've got a, do I have a link to it below? I'll put one under here right when we finish. So she does a, a, a training, like a class every other month for the scan and cut box. It's very cool. And they're getting ready to change up their website so that not only do you get that class, but you'll also have the ability to go back and look at old classes as well. So they just opened up the scan and cut create box class every month you get, or every other month, every other month. So it's like six times a year and you get a box of goodies and a project. And so they have a box opening on Facebook that you get to watch. And then you jump onto their 
Amy So's website. And that's where the private class is. It's not on Facebook. So you watch the private class on there. You can watch it as many times as you want. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So that's cool. All right. Impromptu giveaway. It's only because I'm leaving for a week and I feel bad for y'all. <laughs> so it's not below. Is it in my links through my blog? Uh, to sign up. Yes. I think Amy Sows is in my link to my blog. Let me check and I will show you guys. Let me dig around on that and let me poke around. I think. Yeah. There it is. Yes. Let me share my screen with you guys and show you how you can find it if you're interested in taking that class. And y'all, it's really nice. Uh, you you can ask questions. Okay. So this is my blog. And on my blog, you've got the home page. Okay. And you've got shop PTWT links. And if you're new, okay, you can start there. And this is where you're going to find links. This is the best way you guys can support me more than anything is to start here. Whether you're shopping at um, Dime or in Brilliance or the Fat Quarter Shop or anywhere you're going, Kimberbell, any of that. Uh, it's for embroidery and quilting. And so you click here. But here's the, the link right here. Amy So Scan and Cut Create Box Serge Box Fabric Kits. And when you click on that, <clears throat> it'll jump you over to her site and I get credit for that. So that's an affiliate thing for me. It's how I make my living now, you guys. I had no idea that would ever happen to me, but it did. I don't know how it just did. You're going to have Becky withdrawal. Yeah. Oh, April. You're sweet. No, no, no. Y'all, there's so much. So I put a link in our Facebook group. So if you're not a member of our private Facebook group, please join. You got to answer all the questions. Okay. But uh, I put a link to the video of the strawberry yesterday in the Facebook group so you guys can see that. And um, that shows exactly, it's the strawberry from Be Vintage. And it shows step by step the process that I use to turn uh, a paper drawing into machine embroidery applique. So speaking of that, the title of this situation room is What Are Hidden Stitches? And I... I want to talk about that just a minute. If you're an embroiderer, if you're not an embroiderer, you can go get some more coffee. Okay. Over in the kitchen. So pardon. Y'all, my nose is itching. South Texas It's we have, uh, <laughs> yeah, hit like you guys. That would be great. Like, and subscribe another great way and share. I love it when you share my channel. Thank you. So when when digitizers, embroidery digitizers are putting together their stuff, okay, they have a whole different language that they use to put together designs versus what the end user sees, you know, you and I, when so I'm going to use PES embroidery files, for example. So digitizers don't digitize in PES file format. They digitize in their own format, whatever format the, the uh, embroidery software, whichever one they're using. Oh, thank you, Marsha. You're so sweet. Thank you. Happy cruise. Yay. I'll need that to pay the bill. <laughs> thank you so much. Marsha gave me a super sticker. So thank you. I appreciate that. <clears throat> so Embroidery digitizers digitize in whatever format that their software is, is they're doing it in. And when they're all said and done with their design, they hit a button and it converts the design into all of the end user home embroidery formats. Okay. So kind of keep that in mind when we, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a question I got from a user yesterday about BF fonts. Not BX, but BF, okay? So not only do they, and, and when they're in their embroidery 
software, they're digitizing software. And digitizers have a whole different language than you and I would use. Okay. So let's talk about hidden stitches. So when you're designing pieces that overlap, right? When you're working with, whether you're using, um, whether you're using Embrilliant Stitch Artist 2 or maybe BES or Simply Applique or whatever embroidery software you are using as an end user and you overlap these pieces, like see how the eggs are overlapped? Okay. See how those eggs are overlapped, overlapped, not hidden. All right. So the blanket stitches that are under the overlapped pieces are not hidden. They are overlapped. Now, if you're trying to make a, an, an overlapped design like this and the blanket stitches, the final blanket stitches are not going away in the software. They're not going away. And you're getting really frustrated because you can't get the blanket stitches out from underneath those overlapped pieces. So you fire off an email to tech support and you say, I can't get rid of the hidden stitches. In embroidery digitizing speak, these are not hidden stitches. So when you say, I can't get rid of hidden stitches, you're going to get back an email that says, I don't know what you're talking about. Jenny, thank you for the super sticker. You are so thoughtful. Thank you. I appreciate that. So when you say, I need to get rid of hidden stitches, there's, and, and Brilliance will say, well, send me the BE file because that's the working file. That's the, that's the, style that they work in is BE. Okay. When you save an Embrilliance file, it saves as PES, save as stitch and working. Stitch is the PES file for the end user like you and me. And the working file is the, the, the digitizing software part of it. All right. So it's two different things. So in, the folks at Embrilliance will say, well, send me your BE file and let me see what you're talking about. And then you'll send that, the BE file, and you'll get an email back that says there are no hidden stitches because that's not hidden stitches, all right? So then what are hidden stitches? Hidden stitches, and I'm not a digitizer, so correct me if I'm wrong if I've got digitizers on here, but hidden stitches are something you would use a density repair kit for. You get a design from somewhere and it's so heavy and thick on the fill. It's like a flak vest. Okay. And it won't even bend all of that underlay under there. Those are hidden stitches under a fill and density repair kit kit. They call it DRK. It's sole purpose in life is to lighten the load on those stitches that are hidden by stitches on top of it. Okay. I just want to make sure. So, oh, Annette, the Art Spira app, it says open with, you need to use the Art Spira app on a mobile device. It only, it doesn't work on a desktop to my knowledge, not that well. The same as knockdown stitches. No, Mary Jo, Mary Jo, knockdown stitches are different. Knockdown stitches are not hidden. Those are actually open to the world so that, it knocks down like the nap or the pile on a towel to allow a monogram to stand up. It's underneath or around. Okay. So it, it's just knocking down. It's a, it's a basic overlay. So that's kind of a thing. So you guys will be hit hitting the button that says remove hidden stitches to get rid of the blanket stitches under here, under your overlapped pieces. And in brilliance isn't doing anything because there are no hidden stitches. These are overlapped. And to remove overlap stitches, you can go into the stitch simulator and there's a way where you can remove stitches using the stitch simulator by changing the color of the stitches that you don't want and then deleting those in the objects panel, okay? So 
Now, Rita's like, hey, oh my goodness, you'll get overwhelmed. If you announce that you're new, there's a welcoming committee reading the chat, you guys. Look out. <laughs> so um, that's just kind of a thing. Okay. So digitizers digitize in a different format than the end user, and then their language is different. And I'll tell you, I have seen some embroidery software. I use in Brilliance because it is so stinking user friendly, right? If I want to center in the hoop, there's an icon. It looks like a little tiny dot and it's got four arrows pointing at it, north, south, east, and west. And you click on, or you hover over it and it says center in the hoop. So you click on it and your design goes whoop, right to the center of the hoop where you want it. I look at other embroidery software and it's designed with the language and thought process of a digitizer, not an end user. So I'm looking around for an icon to center in the hoop on this other software and I can't find it. And I'm like, why, why can't I find it? So I send an email to the company and I'm like, where, how do I center in the hoop? I can't find it. Well, you gotta go here and go to this menu and drop down and click there. Why, why do I have to do that? Give me a button, right? Why is that so hard? Y'all don't get me on a tear about poorly designed software. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, Pamela, there's two different, she's brand new to embroidery. Welcome. Um, you know, you start spending a lot of money. Don't blame me. You can blame all those people in the chat, but not me. Okay. So you're interested in getting the free and brilliance to start with. There are two different free versions. There's a demo version. It's in brilliance.com slash demo. And if you want to get it, please use my links below. That's very helpful to me, even though it's free. It's very helpful. So the demo version allows you to pull designs in, copy, paste, play with them, and all of that. You cannot, um, you cannot uh, save anything or print anything, but you can play with it all you want. Okay. Let me see. M moving. Let me see here on the happy Easter, moving that to an embroidery stitch was eye opening. I could technically scan in my grandmother's embroidery and copy that machine embroidery to a point. Yes, you can like, like hand stitching, um, a drawing or something. Yes. Deb. Technically. Yeah. Y'all, the technology is there. It's still very rudimentary. So hidden stitches also when stitches are being stitched in the same stitch point. I know what you mean, Joyce, possibly if they're underneath. But like on an applique, you'll have a placement line. And then you'll have the tack down. And that's going to happen in the exact same stitch point. Yeah. So... Bonnie says, get ready. It's addictive. <laughs> uh, Fanny says, remove hidden stitches is only for merge designs. Separate the designs that overlap. You can't see it in the BE file, only just the stitch file. The scissor icon lets you see what will be removed. Okay. Fanny's got an idea here. Maureen, thank you for the super sticker. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm not a digitizer and some of you may be, so I appreciate any kind of clarity on that. The problem is the person like me who's not a digitizer, I used to think that, that that the, the final blanket stitch or the final satin stitch under overlapped pieces were called hidden stitches and they're not. It's a different, it's for digitizing, okay? So a lady sent me an email and she says, I have these... BF fonts, what are they? I found them on my laptop. Can I use them on my brother machine? Well, I didn't know. So I asked my local expert, Julie from Designs by Juju. And she let me know that the BF is a native font to brother software. So PE Design, BES, Simply Applique. Those are BF fonts, just like BX fonts are native to in brilliance. Okay. So every, just about every, just about, I don't want to, I don't want to give it a black and white embroidery software 
that can digitize and whatnot, or it'll have fonts in it, may have their own font native to that software. So those will show up on your, on your machine. So the thing is, I don't know if you can import those BF, right? Bravo Foxtrot. I don't think you can import BF fonts into in Brilliance. You'd have to use PE Design. So if you've got, or BES, some brother software, brother pace setter. So if, you've, if you don't have that software anymore, because you've already got a new laptop and don't have the license or whatever, then they won't work unless you get a new version of brother software. I hope that makes sense. So thanks to Julie from Juju. <laughs> She's, yeah. Barbara says tack down is usually inside placement. I've seen it both directly on top or just inside. Brenda, thank you so much. You are so sweet. Always being helpful. Well, I hope so. Thank you for the super sticker, Brenda. That's very generous of you. Thank you. All right, you guys. All right, quilters, I'm back. <laughs> I've got to get stitching on the sashing. I'm continuing to do the sashing on my American Pie quilt. Somebody else is doing this and throwing the pictures up in Facebook. I'm very proud of you. You're doing great. Yeah. We're doing a giveaway, you guys. So if you haven't yet, and it don't, you only need to do it one time, I'm giving away the Be Creative Charm Pack for Moda by Deb Strain. Look at that one. Isn't that pretty? I didn't show that one earlier. So it's all about bees, and it'll make a nice little table runner. Hashtag power tools to win this, okay? Very nice. Deb, thank you. You are so nice. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. There's some more honeycomb. Look at that. The gold and the grays, creams, just gorgeous. Pretty, pretty. Okay, so I got to get stitching on this. Yeah, if you haven't already, be sure to do that. Let me double check and make sure you guys are doing that. U.S. shipping only, please, y'all. Let me look. Yeah, all right. It's collecting. We're good. Perfect. Yeah, if you're brand new to embroidery, look out. It's going to change your life. Change your life. And if you're new and you want to give somebody a shout out or get their attention or something like that, in the chat, you can use the at symbol. You started a block of the month. Allison, which one is that? You cut all the fabric to the right sizes, used quarter inch seam allowance, and your blocks are still small. Huh, I hope you did that on test fabric. That was for, that was using the scan and cut? Hmm, that's interesting. I don't cut quilt fabric on my scan and cut. I just, I don't. I like, I just don't. Let's see. Secret Garden. Ah, I see. Where can you buy the Moda fabric? So Belinda, this fabric is old. It's an old, you can Google search it. Might come up on Etsy. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Priscilla. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, sweetheart. You are so thoughtful. I appreciate that. You know, a lot of people look at this as, you know, a cheap class because <laughs> you never know what you're going to, what little nugget's going to pop out. I took so many Craftsy classes when Craftsy first came out. I took, I went back and looked at my library, you know, they were $40 a piece back then, or I'd get them at half price for 20. And y'all, I must have taken a thousand dollars worth of Craftsy classes. So I just, and every single embroidery class they offered and every single quilting class they offered. So that was, that's kind of how I absorbed this, this sponge absorbed that stuff. 
So did I hear from on Wander Lane? I did not. I did not. I might today. They probably got it and they went, uh, I don't know what this is. What do I do with this? And so they're going to have a meeting. Maybe, maybe they, it, maybe it went to junk. Who knows, right? I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. I'm of the mindset, you know, beg forgiveness, right? <laughs> That's how I roll. So I'm still going to do it. I'll show you guys uh, my finished each month. But um, somebody uh, left a comment under the video that they had written on Wander Lane and said, can I do this, create the cut files in my scan and cut? And they said they don't have cut files. And so, yes, feel free. So as long as you're not sharing, right? How long have I been embroidering and quilting? Rachel wants to know. Oh, 2010. I got I got my embroidery machine in 2007. My PE 770. Uh, uh. Hazel Ann, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I I apologize. I know I know I have international watchers. I know, and I tell you what, I'm I'm gonna work with companies who do digital downloads for my international shippers. Okay, so if I can do a giveaway from them for an international shipping, I will. Okay. Um. You know, and that way it's free to you to download. Okay. But if it's a physical product, I shipped a pattern to a lady, a little, I shipped a pattern to a lady in Canada and it was $18 in shipping to ship the pattern. I'm sorry, y'all. I know. I'm sorry. It's just, <laughs> so you have a new cell air. Oh, I missed it. Hold on a minute. You have a new still air and have been using embroidery fills to quilt. Just discovered special embroidery bobbin case. How does the case affect the work? Jody, generally embroidery bobbin cases have a teeny tiny bit more tension on them to give a better stitch out with those lighter weight embroidery bobbin threads. So usually your top thread is like a 40 weight. And you can buy all different weights of bobbin threads. And the bobbin threads that I use are like a 60 weight. So it just gives you a little bit stronger tension. I know I feel bad. You know, I sold my PE 770. Rachel says she's, Ra Rochelle says she has her PE 770 and 500. Gathering dust. <laughs> I know. I know it's terrible. I feel that way about my quattro because I've got the luminaire. All right. Oh, my dogs are up. I can hear them. Um, yeah, my quilty buddy Lisa just texted me and said, do a digital gift certificate to our Power Tools with Thread store. That's a good idea. That's a real good idea. So... Um, yeah, maybe I have to figure out how to do that. So, okay. I hear you guys. I hear you. Yeah. Okay. I still, is it, it's, oh, Keith got the dogs up already. The trash guys are outside. All right. I've got to do some sashing in between these. You have too many machines. I know, Tiny. I've seen your machines. Margaret Tiffin. This is Tiny. She comes up to about here on me, okay? Her house is loaded with machines. She, Tiny collects machines like most women collect shoes. <laughs> some women, not most, some. <laughs> you sold your, uh, oh, that's good. Susan sold her 770. The lady I sold my 772, she probably hasn't used it at all. Yeah. So anyway, okay, I want to make sure that I'm getting stuff dinging all over the place. Oh, Frito, is Frito popping in? I don't hear her. I thought I heard her poke her head through the doggy door. 
Yeah, international shipping is no joke. We sent, somebody bought, um, and it was Canada. She bought one of Keith's seam rippers. And the seam rippers are $25 on our store site. That seam ripper ended up costing her $68 in shipping because of the duties that were put on at the border that we had no idea. So it came to her, in addition to the shipping she already paid, it came to her COD. And she sent me an email. She was very upset. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. So we stopped. We stopped um, shipping to Canada. Because it, it incurs duty and taxes and all kinds of stuff we have no control over and no idea about. And it's terrible. And so I don't want that to happen either where I send, you know, you a little charm pack in Europe and it gets there. And then there's a COD on it that I have no control over because somebody threw some kind of tax on it. It's horrible. It's, it, yeah, but anyway. Ah, hot coffee. I keep it in a Yeti before I start so I can finish my mug while it cools, right? As regular. And then this one's still hot when I pick it up. I got that best mug, I think it's called, and it sits on a little warmer. Y'all, that is not worth the money. Don't, don't spend your money on that. It's got a little disc that it sits on it. And the bottom of it has a little heating. It is supposed to keep your stuff hot. It's not worth it. This, this stays just as hot and it's a third of the price or more. So shipping anything to Canada's highway robbery. Yeah. What single needle embroidery would you buy regardless of the price? Oh, the Luminaire for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're in the market for an embroidery machine, I had a lady email me about that yesterday as well. Uh, she's looking at the embroidery only because she's got plenty of sewing machines. And so she was checking out the Brother NQ1700E, which is just the embroidery machine. That is a fantastic machine. They run around two grand. Okay. It has a six by 10 hoop. It's got a USB to it. It is wireless. So you can send designs to it wirelessly if you want. And it stitches identical. It embroiders identical to my NQ3700D as far as embroidery. Okay. So, and that machine was twice that price but it's got Disney on it and it's an embroidery and sewing combo. That is my travel machine. But as far as the embroidery and what it's doing, um, it's identical to that. So that NQ 1700 E is a perfect, uh, it's a perfect starter machine where you're going to be, you know, if you want to trade up or something, if you guys are thinking about getting an embroidery machine, do not buy one that is only, a four by four hoop. You're going to limit yourself. You're going to get hoop envy and it's going to be a waste of money and you're going to end up buying a five by seven or a six by 10 anyway. So um, always my, my, my best advice, save your pennies or your dollars in this case and get a six by 10. Okay. You have an old laptop that doesn't recognize Windows. Will in brilliance work, Grace? No, it will not. You need to have a good Windows operating system to run any embroidery software. Okay. You've got to have a good operating system for that to work. You can get a laptop, you know, a little Acer for 400 bucks and just use it for your embroidery. That's all you need. Yeah. Oh, Scotty, you're so sweet. She says she'll miss me. I'm fine. I'm going to, I'm taking my hotspot. We've got the Wi-Fi package. We'll see how that works. So it's just, if you're thinking about it, y'all go big or go home. The way I, you know, let me get my little black light here. I gave my other black light to a lady who cleans houses. 
so she could see the bathrooms. <laughs> okay. Black light, white on white fabric, right side, wrong side, black light, flashlight, right side, wrong side. That's how you know. Love it. I numbered these, I believe. This is four, three. So this one goes on this side. Yep. Okay. Little tricks, you guys. Make your life easy, right? Little tricks. You'll end, Judy says she's going to miss me, but she'll like sleeping in. <laughs> Yeah, if you're an, if you're an embroiderer, check out the uh, check out my digitizing videos. Usually, if you search digitize, it'll come up and um, show you how to turn paper applique into an embroidery pattern. And then I will either you can either if you have a high end scan and cut, the ability the optical dots per inch that it has is a higher number. If you're using Lori Holt's simple shapes, you can just put this, this simple shape on the scanning mat, scan it in. You don't even have to trace around it. If you've got one of the, uh, like a 125 or an 85 or an old CM model, y'all, they all work. Somebody said yesterday in the chat, you have the older CM model and you didn't think it would work and it will. It will, it will. I'm going to put this through here. I need to make sure I hit this spot. Where's my little pen? I'm stitching some points. Your local quilt shop to help you not make the four by four hoop mistake. Good. Yeah. They weren't just trying to upsell you. They meant it. There was a lady at all brands, um, Lone Star University last year at All Brands. And she was looking at, my next live will be on Monday the 5th, Bell Cats. Belch Cats? Um, so she was looking at a six needle from Brother. Very savvy, seasoned embroiderer with a single needle. So she's looking at that six needle and I said, don't do it. You'll outgrow it in four minutes. You'll be so sorry you didn't get that 10 needle with a camera. Don't do it. You know, is the last square behind me correct? Which one? This one? That one right there or the other side? What are you talking about? One, two, or three? Which one are you talking about? It looks like it needs to be turned a quarter turn. Deb, which one? One, two, or three? That one? Three? Three. All right. What are y'all talking about? You talking about the center? Let me see. Where's the other one? Oh, I'm tracking. Oh, y'all. That's the thing with this, Kathy. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> Watch. Okay. So this is red on top, blue on the bottom. What's the pattern show? Pattern shows blue on top, red with the blue center, red center. Red center is red on top, blue on the bottom. Right. You're absolutely, okay. Red on top, blue on the bottom. There we go. Yeah. And that's right. The center square is vertical, vertical lines, red on top, blue on the bottom. Yeah. That work? Y'all happy? Great catch. Yes. Thank you. I love you guys. <laughs> thank you so much. Blue on the bottom. Yep. That works. Lines are vertical. Yeah. I'd pull it apart if it was wrong. I just had it turned wrong on the board. Okay. <laughs> yep. Y'all are awesome. So, 
what thread do I use in the bobbin when I'm quilting my top on the embroidery machine? Bobbin thread or 40 weight embroidery thread? So that de totally depends on if the backside will be seen or not. Okay. If it's a pillow where it's going to be inside or it's a, I'm not crazy about that with placemats and table toppers or wall hangings. So if it's going to be against the wall or it's going to be on a table, I'll just use regular embroidery thread. If it's going to be seen, okay, like a quilt, then I will use standard same thread in the bobbin as I do in the top. And I don't change out the bobbin case because it's still, I don't know, it, the tension. I don't want to fiddle with it. So let's see here. You're on a cruise and that puts you in the right time zone. Well, good. Sandra, look at you being able to see on a cruise. That's great. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, Melanie. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I'm sure it's beautiful and she loved it, right? I think that's fantastic. Let me make sure my giveaway tool is still working. Yes, we're, we're going to give away, guys, in just a little bit, the Be Creative Charm Pack. Okay, this is for Moda by Deb Strain. And we're going to give it away here in just a little bit. U.S. shipping only, please. All right. Let you guys see that this is perfect for a little table topper. You could use a whole lot of background fabric and actually make it into a quilt too. So make sure it's hashtag power tools. So yeah, I'm hoping I have a wonderful time. <laughs> All right. So I need to get this stitched. I'm glad you caught that. I would have sewn it sideways. I appreciate that. What did somebody say the other day? Takes a village. <laughs> so when I am, um, when I'm trying to match up the points and I don't tip any points on these blocks, um, yeah, I have, she says, by the time I get back, Kathy says she'll know how to use her scan and cut. You guys have got a playlist on scan and cut. Check it out. So what I do is I will take a pin and pop it directly through that point right there. Okay. And then I take a iron away marker. And where the, now I've got this seam pressed open, but where the pin comes out, I just, I'll draw a line and that's kind of a landing strip for me to hit. And that way I know I'm going to not tip that point. I do it for every one of them. I don't guess on this because I don't want to sew it twice. And sometimes like on this checkered fabric, see how it's checkered? Sometimes the tip of the piece is white, not red. And then I really can't tell. So this is what I don't like about pressing seams open. See how they did that? I don't like that. I'll have to fix that before I get going. It's the only thing I don't like about pressing seams open. Yeah. Yeah, see, like, look here. See how I'm right on the tip of that gray star. And on the back, if I didn't mark it, I wouldn't know where... See, it's way down there. It's weird. Who knows? So I'm just going to make a little mark. And that's my landing strip to tell me where I need to hit. Okay. Dealing with it. Diana's dealing with a kidney stone. Oh, bless your heart, Diana. You know, that reminds me of this. <laughs> I was a brand new airman. Brand new, 1983, and I was working on a surgical ward. I was an admin troop, and I'm working at the desk on a you know front desk on a surgical ward. And there was a gentleman up there, 
uh, with kidney stones, dealing with a stone, right? And the doctor told him, I was in the room because I went in to go get paperwork or something. I heard this doctor tell him, the urologist, he said, I want you to go home. We're going to discharge you. He says, I want you to go home and get a six pack of beer and get in your recliner and sit there and drink it as much as you can <laughs> that night. Apparently the alcohol expands the ureters <laughs> or whatever's in your kidneys. And sure enough, he passed the stone the next day. They, they can't tell you that today. And I asked the nurse, I said, oh, he told him to go home and drink beer. And she said, oh yeah, it's the best thing for stones. <laughs> and I thought, oh my word, old school medicine, you guys. Before the days of lithotripsy, right? <laughs> mm. Linda, good question. Excellent question. As a newbie to the scan and cut, do the mats get slightly cut each time I cut? Yeah, they do. Yep. You've watched lots of how to clean it, but no mention of how the mat will be etched as you make fabric cuts. Absolutely. It does. There's my Frito. Good morning, baby girl. Hi, love. Hello. She's such a good dog, you guys. I just love her. She's fabulous dog. Did you get your goldfish? You did? Yeah, I left one for you. You're a sweetie. She gets a little goldfish every morning. So um, I just thought that was funny. I'm all about old school medicine. I'd love a doctor to tell me to go home and drink beer. <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't have kidney stones. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. All right, you guys. Look. Oh, here's one, too. Look at this. You worked in a hospital in 72, and it does work. Look at that. The doc prescribed beer to be brought to the hospital as a treatment. It does. Alcohol expands the, well, you know, if you drink a beer, you're going to have to go tinkle right away, right? That's, that's what it's doing. And it makes it flush and it works. But everybody's so uptight nowadays, they can't tell you that. And that's something. Big pharma. <laughs> Let me get this stitched. This open seam I don't like. We're getting ready to, if you haven't done a hashtag power tools, y'all go ahead and do that. I'll sew up that one. Now, all of these. Get little holes. I don't like that. Don't like that at all. Well, that's where I stitch. I guess if I started with a, with a leader, that would. Oh, no. I'm not going to do that right now. I've got black thread in the bobbin because I was doing the binding on this where I've got, I stitched in the ditch, white on top and black on the back. Have you guys seen how I do that? Look at that. It's on black, but look at that pretty miter. Doesn't that come out nice? Just beautiful. Love it. Love it. All right, you guys, our time is up. I'm going to miss you so much. So the situation room is going to be closed for a week. I will be back on February 5th. We leave tomorrow and then the cruise leaves on Sunday. Uh, feel free to check out my videos on how to use your scan and cut. Uh, you know, how to turn paper applique patterns into embroidery. Uh, and, and, or just stitch a little bit. Okay. And get a UFO finished. And, uh, you guys check out Pat Sloan. She's got a morning video every morning. So that would give you some, uh, inspiration there as well. She's wonderful at talking about her thought process as she puts quilts together. So if you're looking for a daily, check out Pat Sloan's. Okay. She's a little bit earlier than me. Uh, but, um, you know, you'll enjoy it. So, all right, you guys, let's take the, let's do the giveaway. So let me present my screen and share screen. And I want to do the giveaway tool and I'm going to share. What do we got? 490 entries. Excellent. We're going to draw 491. Somebody got in just at the last second. 
Let's see who we're going to give this away to. Yay! Who is it? Janet Cromwell. Excellent, Janet. Winner, winner. Yay! Chicken dinner. <laughs> Congratulations, Janet. That's wonderful. Thank you so, so much for joining me this morning. I just enjoy the heck out of you guys. We have so much fun and you are so generous to come in and bring me into your home and share our stitching time together. So, all right, I'm going to go. I've got packing to do. I also have to go get a pedicure because, you know, I don't need some monkey feet while I'm out there on the cruise ship. <laughs> We will talk to you February 5th. I look forward to seeing you when I get back. You guys go sew something. Oh, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you wouldn't mind. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.